Hi, I'm Judy Tayamji. Thank you very much for joining us today. A couple of housekeeping things. So first of all, as we told you yesterday, we were trying to get someone from the Native Youth Movement to join us to talk about their issues. However, we weren't able to set that up yet, and so we may do that in the future. And secondly, some of you were concerned because we did have a caller yesterday offering her opinion on how scalping originated, and it was an opinion, and I know that some people uh, wanted to get into a historic discussion about that, maybe another day, not today. Today we're going to talk about fetal alcohol syndrome, and beyond that, we want to look at some of the issues that were raised in the book Stolen from Our Embrace, but that are in all of our communities, especially the downtown east side. Now you need to know a couple of things. First of all, 52% of Aboriginal people are under the age of 25. That's an important statistic to remember because it's certainly not like the non-Aboriginal community. In addition to that, in a 10 block radius of the downtown east side of Vancouver, two-thirds of the alcohol is consumed and approximately half of the babies born there are affected by drug or alcohol addiction at birth. It's a pretty tough challenge to overcome through their lives. There are many other issues that need to be raised during the show, but it's very important to recognize one thing. Every child that's born with fetal alcohol syndrome will cost us one and a half million dollars in medical treatment after the fact. The prevention of it is a lot less expensive and when we start to add in judicial costs or criminal costs or cost of foster care the cost goes a lot higher than one and a half million and it's time we recognized it was a problem and that we all took ownership of this and helped our fellow human beings and put the money into prevention I'm Judy Tayabji and that's my opinion what's yours the Tayabji phone lines are now open from Victoria call 383-6036 or toll free at 1-888-383-6036 call now and we we have three people joining us today to help us in this discussion and as we said yesterday if you had issues you wanted to raise yesterday feel free to phone in today there are two letters that we also received after yesterday's show which we will share with you later in the show one on the native youth movement and another one uh, suggesting a way we can build bridges uh, through all the communities and I think it's important today that we also hear from non-aboriginal people I mean anyone who wants to phone in but from people from all over the community and let's welcome our guests we have three people with us uh, Annette Garm joins us and you are with she the Shiwe program and you work in the downtown east side of Vancouver and I, I'm glad that you're here to answer some of the questions and Candice Boudreau joins us and thank you very much and I'm so pleased that you've worn some of your of your traditional clothing that's yeah. beautiful. Thanks. And her mother, um, uh, Margaret Boudreau, joins us. Now, both of you, you are with the royal line of Delgamuth. You are the matriarch of the Frog Clan, and Candace is a princess. That's correct. Yeah. Now, that's a very important thing these days with the Delgamuth ruling that just came out in December. You two are going to be in a very important position <laughs> in the next few months, but the political stuff we'll leave for another day. We'll talk about social things. I'm actually going to start asking uh, questions with Annette as a registered nurse. What is the cultural context of fetal alcohol syndrome? We saw a lot of controversy recently in Manitoba where they wanted to bring in legislation for women who were addicted, and uh, apparently something's going on in Ontario. Why don't you talk about that? All right. Well, I think it's important to look at FAS in its cultural and social context. Um, we work at, or I work at a project in the downtown east side called Shiwe, and Shiwe is a pregnancy outreach project for substance using women, and we follow women through their pregnancies and postnatally 18 months to provide them with early positive parenting experiences. Fetal alcohol syndrome, which is a syndrome that affects infants born to substance using mothers that often results in um, congenital effects. Uh, effects such physical as... Physical or... Mixed. That's correct. Sometimes There's emotional. some physical effects, cognitive, behavioral, a variety of effects, usually slow development, low birth weight, those types of effects, occurs across the spectrum of society. Right. I think it's important to say that. Our project is located in the downtown east side of Vancouver. As many people know, it is one of Canada's poorest neighborhoods and where there exists amongst the most marginalized of people. Right. Um, of the project that we're working with, 75% of the women that come to the project are Aboriginal. When we're looking at trying to understand the needs of women that uh, use our services so that we can structure services so that they're appropriate to help substance using women, we start to uh, put together a profile that gives us some clues what the context is. 
what we find that many of the women that use projects like ours, and, and this is congruent not only for Aboriginal populations, but we see across North America. Wherever there's an uh, right, substance in addiction. inner city substance using women. Okay. Is that the women tend to be historically very poor. Poverty is a major factor in the health of these women. Right. But it, and especially among some of the women we're seeing, we also see that many of the women have histories of early sexual and physical abuse. And in the Aboriginal community, as we learned yesterday, some of that dates back four generations, residential That's schools, the foster care system, all of that. Okay. And so, um, and also that some of the women that are also using the project are themselves FAS, fetal alcohol affected, or they themselves have the syndrome. Okay. What we have to remember is that some of these women start substance using themselves as children. You okay. know what about so it's 10 a long or 11? Cycle. Yeah. It's a very long cycle with its roots, sometimes in childhood. Right. These women often feel great shame from the sexual abuse or the stigmatization with coming from a broken family or dysfunctional home where they're raised in a home where there's alcohol abuse. Okay. So the roots are often in their childhood or some are put in the downtown east side, put right. on the streets at 11 or 12 to work in the sex trade. Right. There's often this context of great grief and loss in women's so lives. That it requires a much more complicated solution than it does. We have to look at the, okay. you know, how do women get on the streets of the downtown east side? Okay. Many of the women that we see are actually from other areas of Canada. They're right across from reserves all across Canada. Okay. You've heard the term that the downtown east side is the urban reservation. So oh, we're I looking see. at disenfranchised, marginalized people who have histories of low self-esteem, abuse, poverty, they're caught in the, the drug trade, the, right. uh, uh, the sex trade, and get addicted. And we have to also understand the psychology right. and the etiology of addiction itself and once okay. women are addicted. I want to bring, uh, I know we, we, this is a short segment, but I want to bring Candace into this. And you wanted to say hello to somebody. Hi, hello everybody, <laughs> my family, whoever's watching. Okay. Um, I was hoping that you would tell us your story about your birth mother. Okay. Um, well, Sandra passed away um, last March of 1997 on Good Friday, and um, she was really ill with the flu, and she was having a lot of pains with her chest, I think. And um, so she passed away on last um, year, and um, so I've been really upset about her death because it's hard, and we're very close, and so... I really miss her. She's in the spirit world now. So. Okay. And Margaret, now in this case, now Sandra, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Candice, who is very articulate and obviously it does dancing, does a lot of Native tradition, actually was born with fetal alcohol syndrome. And, and uh, although you were her mother and you have raised her from a baby, uh, her birth mother was your sister. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, my sister, uh, Candice's birth mother, Sandra, was the youngest of uh, the four of us. Um, I believe that my sister was um, uh, affected, fetal alcohol affects herself, um, and to a certain extent, I think most of us in my family are have some impact. have some have some alcohol effects of some sort. And they do say that the, the that the more pregnancies there are, the greater the effect is on the child. Right. And so in that case, you've actually become an activist because of, I mean, basically Candace here is a, is a great example of how, although there are some challenges, some Definitely. very good things can come out of this. Yes. Okay. We actually have to take a break already. We haven't gone to the phones, and there are a lot of people who want to talk to all of you. And so we're going to take a break, and, and we're going to try to, in this show, come up with some of the solutions that we can have. And we'd also like to hear from some of you if you have stories to share. And we'll be right back. Rainy day blues got you down, don't frown, girl. Just smile at the sun and cover girl seashells. She says, seashells. New shades back cover girl. Pink shells, sand castles, silver plums, and everything is sun kissed. So get what she says. Cover girl seashells. A fresh idea, a fresh face to the world. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Hi, can I take your order? Can I get a hamburger? Will that be all? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, come again. Can I take your order? Fish. Fish. All right. 
for healthy looking skin, wash with Noxzema. It helps scrub out oil and dirt, won't overstrip skin of its natural moisture like some soap can. Look, if you're free tonight, maybe we can go to a movie. I'm afraid I don't get off until 10. Noxzema girls get noticed. I was cycling through a, a green light and a, a vehicle made a, a left turn in front of me and I hit the vehicle and woke up in hospital. Les Wall tried to work with ICBC's adjusters but had problems. I felt ICBC didn't care about my well-being. He called the law firm of Stevens and Holman. I'm Simon Holman. If you've been injured in an accident, call us for a free consultation. We'd like to help. They were concerned about my well-being and they, um, they took care of everything and I was, I was really impressed with that. There's great case lot savings at Thrifty Foods. Uncle Ben's converted rice. It's um, superior quality rice and it cooks up fine every time. Probably one of the most favored in the restaurant industry. <laughs> well, of course they're just, oh, mouth-watering delicious. Mr. Mr. Christie, Christ. you make, make good, good cookies. cookies. <laughs> Smiles in the aisle for you. Thank you, Ryan's homegrown food store. And today we're talking about fetal alcohol syndrome and particularly uh, the downtown east side, although there are, are issues all over the province, and we're looking for solutions. And we'll go straight to the phone lines and talk to Brenda in Victoria. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, I sure enjoy your show. Well, thank you. Um, the comment I want to make is that um, quite often the government takes children without consulting the families. Right. Um, because I lost my grandson uh, in 1988 uh, because my daughter had been addicted to um, drugs. Right. And um, I tried tracing him back, and um, he was adopted out. Um, the last, uh, I think the final adoption came through on April 15th, 1990. So I... I can't even get to hold my grandson, and that is tearing me apart. Do you know where he is? Um, well, he was in the Lower Mainland up till April the 15th, and after that, I have no idea. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I guess that is a huge issue in yes, the Aboriginal community. Definitely. Now, sometimes they say, too, that uh, when children are apprehended from the mums, that the mums then go out and get pregnant again to replace the child that's been taken away. So it doesn't really solve that problem. Uh, it, anyone that's wants to very much that? an issue. There's quite a bit of literature and research done, both in Aboriginal populations and in other communities, looking at the effects of grief and loss on women's reproductive choices. And whether it's a conscious or an unconscious um, decision, it's often an, um, a, a factor in why women get um, I'm pregnant again, and it right. has historically played a huge role in Aboriginal populations. Well, I can imagine, especially the family. But, but the government is starting to look at other options. In fact, I know in Vancouver, in the MCF, Ministry for Children and Families, is looking at a new initiative where we've been doing much advocacy work with, uh, with MCF over the years of trying to have them understand the value of keeping families together even when they're fractured. And contacting the grandmother, That's for example. Right, so and, and also there's a program, I know that they're in, they're a pilot program in Vancouver called Building Blocks, where they're going to put lay home visitors into high-risk families where substance use may be an issue also um, to support keeping families together. The value of that, of course, is the, the importance of keeping families together, but also you want to prevent women from entering into that cycle of despair, despondency, So the person actually just moves in and, and lives with them? And That's well, visits daily. Oh, okay. It's usually a lay person, someone from the culture that the person is themselves from. So if the woman is an Aboriginal woman, it would be an Aboriginal home visitor that oh, would come and support that woman for the first five years. It would be interesting to follow that project. We'll take another call and then we'll, we'll talk about this further. Uh, Diane in Victoria, go ahead, please. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi. Um, enjoy your show. Thanks. I wanted to say that I feel that we should focus on the tremendous achievements for women who overcome their problem because I think it takes a lot more for a person to overcome this problem than it does for them to become a president of a company. Yes. And I think if we can focus on the great achievement um, 
then maybe we can help others in, in that cycle. Role okay, modeling. well, thank you for that, Diana. I, I know you feel strongly that that's the right way to go. Yeah, role modeling, I think, is very, very critical to the uh, success of our our young people with fetal alcohol syndrome and effects, and, and also our, our adults that are affected. Um, Candace and I are very traditional in the every, we live in the city, but in a very traditional way. Mm -hmm. We uh, belong to the traditional mothers group in Vancouver, and um, um, we um, we uh, encourage um, moms with affected children and moms that are on income assistance to come into our center and participate in our programs. And um, we're um, presently working out of the Thunderbird Community Center. And we're making um, button blankets. Well, I can see the, like what Candace is wearing. Moccasins. That's beautiful. Uh, we encourage moms to bring in their children. We also have daycare available, and um, so it allows a lot elder. of those traditions to come out as well. I mean, you're getting back in touch with those. Sort yes, of things. when we operate from the center, we operate from the focus of the our uh, medicine lodge, okay. and our center and our homes are. Our literary, our medicine lodge. Okay, I'm going to take another call, and then Candace, I'm going to uh, give you a chance to speak. But let's talk to Diane now in Nanaimo. Hi, Diane in Nanaimo. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm 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 just calling um, in regards to um, uh, your show here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, an adopted daughter, mm -hmm. and um, and she suffers from I guess the fetal alcohol effect. Right. Not not the full blown syndrome. Right. And uh, and the, the symptoms didn't really show until she was maybe 10, 11 years old. And then, uh, like, she's a very nice-looking girl and everything, but it, you know, the, the line, the stealing, the drugs, and or the drugs didn't come till later, but there's a line and the stealing and no conscience and all this sort of thing. And that I think I was told that the sociopathic behavior and that all goes with the um, uh, fetal alcohol. Yeah, initially, unless there's some treatment for it. Yeah, and, yeah. and I, you know, I, I took her to several places, you know, trying to get help for her, and there's just no way. Um, you know, they all said, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. Right. And so now she's 27, and she's into, you know, heroin and prostitution and, and whatnot. And, um, yeah. and you, you know, it, it's so sad. Right. Um, like, her, both her natural parents were um, chronic alcoholics, and, you know, it, if people could only realize what they're doing to their children. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, fetal. Uh, well, of course, her her daughter is now 27. Uh, Candice, in your case, a lot of people would look to you and say you have a lot of courage, and you're mm -hmm. an excellent example yes. for people. And now, how was it like growing up with fetal alcohol syndrome? It was yeah. very hard, very difficult. I would get fr frustrated, really cry because I didn't understand something. Right. And it's not easy living with FAS, and so. I try to make my life easier by doing things, you know, saying I can't do this because I have a FAS. I find solutions and stuff to make it better. Right. Yeah, so. Do you, uh, when you deal with other young people who are, you, I know you do a lot of work with them, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of message do you give them if they're getting frustrated and they want to turn that into violence or they want to turn that into crime? How, how do you deal with that? I just say, um, you know, just don't get all mad. Just, you know, ask for help or don't, you know, just take your time and, if you need help, ask, and, you know, just don't get angry and stuff. Okay, because so. there's a better way to do it. Yeah. Okay. And, and Annette, uh, why is there always money after the children are born? Well, and there isn't the money there's there limited to amount of money. <laughs> well, I mean, um, <laughs> even after the children are born, I think that we should talk about that. But our project is a project that looks at prevention. There is, I mean, we have to, again, look at what is happening in society. There is a sentiment out there that if you are helping substance-using women bef before the child is born, that you're enabling them. Enabling them to enabling drink Enabling them to drink. And so you have to address some sort of society's views, too. But I think more and more we're becoming aware that prevention efforts are where um, the value of intervention is. This is a very preventable disorder. And so you see projects like ours coming together where it's a project where you have multidisciplinary teams. Like people from the YMCA and the government and uh, other Well, we're agencies. multi agency but what I mean multidisciplinary is that you have nurses, physicians, oh, social workers, alcohol and drug counselors, outreach workers, all working together 
to help m meet women's needs supportively. Right. We know that legislative treatment doesn't necessarily work because, again, if we're relating it back to the cultural, historical context of those women, they're already disempowered. They're already filled with self-hatred or self-loathing, plus the stigmatization of addiction, the stigmatization of addiction in women, yeah. pregnant women. It just keeps on worsening. So if you legislate women to treatment, yeah. you make them feel worse. Right. And that doesn't produce a better, healthier baby. But also, there, you know, we we assume our 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 prisons are drug free. They're not. So there's no oh, way I of see. protecting. So even if you throw them in prison for breaking no, you the can't. law, there's great so drug use in our okay. prisons, and and same with treatment. Yeah. But we know that if we can support women, most women do want to. They need help. Yes, do know that they need help. And so if you can help them meet their needs, there are ways of addressing this in a preventative way okay. where you can address the issue. And, and in our project, we've seen 700 women over the last four years, and 74% of those women stay with the project wow. until the baby's delivered. That's great. So well, you have to take another break. <laughs> I hate this. I'm <laughs> like, I'm have is an important intervention. And it's so, much, it's so much better, even if, you just, uh, I get, even if you're just sort of the angry taxpayer, you know, and you want to be judgmental. I mean, prevention is cheaper. So my question to the viewers is, do you care? Do you care about these babies who are being born into the poorest part of the province? We'll be right back. Tayamshi is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Okay, let's add this up. Pregnancy, nine months, 17 pounds of water weight gain, 26 hours of labor. But that's okay. I love them. Glad to do it. 240 sleepless nights, 1,089 diaper changes, and they're in kindergarten. 447 hours of homework. I love them, but Einstein's they ain't. And then, wait for it, adolescence. Oh. Want to make it up to mom? Start by picking up the new KFC Mom's Mega Meal. Featuring a creamy white chocolate cheesecake and Mother's Day Hallmark card. Real meals, easy as KFC. The undersigned, for themselves, to their heirs, property, and the signs, here the witness the era of the parties of the their ceiling, for themselves, their heirs, the undersigned, the undersigned of the of the of the of their heirs, and the signs. Legal speak. ICBC personal injury cases are filled with it. Fortunately, someone speaks your language, Taylor & Company. We offer these services and settle many claims out of court. Taylor & Company, guiding clients through the legal maze for 25 years. You get a smile, pretty foods, you're getting more. I'll have to ride, pretty foods, so much in store. We're trying to keep the island smiling each and every day. We're trying to do what we can do. The smiles in the bank for you. Thank you, Ryan's homegrown food store. Pretty foods. background and it all becomes amazingly clear the digital PCS network be free BC tell mobility today we're talking about fetal alcohol syndrome our guests are Margaret Boutreau she and her daughter Candice Boudreau are both activists on fetal alcohol syndrome Annette Garm is the coordinator of the Shiway program and Margaret and Candice Boudreau come from the royal line of the Dalgamuth clan, which uh, uh, Doug was tribe, and uh, from the frog clan, and you are a matriarch and a princess, and that's very going to become increasingly important <laughs> as uh, Aboriginal pol politics evolves. Uh, we'll go to the phone lines, and then some of the things you were saying during the break, I think you need to share about positive thinking. But first, let's talk to Stephen in Pender Harbor. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Hi. <coughs> yeah, uh, Judy, I have to take a little bite at you for your first opening statement where you said we must take responsibility for this. Yes. Who's we? I never forced anybody to drink. I have great respect for the natives. I grew up in Pender Harbor right. in a school that is, what, 30 miles away from the Seashelt Indian Reserve. Right. And uh, growing up, I always felt kind of envious of Indians. <clears throat> They're always bigger, better looking, had the girlfriends. <laughs> we played sports together, yeah. you know. And I'm just kind of curious as to where this hatred against the, the average working man comes from. I, I don't run the government. 
All I do is pay taxes. Right. And I don't see anything getting better. I just see more anger coming towards me. Anger from the Aboriginal people? From the or? Aboriginal people, I. Okay, well, that's one thing. But one thing I will tell you, when I say we have to take responsibility, it's because as a taxpayer and as somebody who's working to pay for the system, to what extent are we just letting people fall through the cracks because we don't care enough to make it an issue? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. When I say we, I mean, I'm sure I didn't actively, and I'm sure neither did you, actively push people into a state of depression so they move to substance abuse. I mean, I wasn't there for the residential schools. But I always feel if we don't do something now, we become part of the problem in the future. Okay. Yeah. Can we include the reserves as part of the we here? Yes. Okay. What about the Seashelf Indian Band getting or asking for all this money and cash? Yes. And land. Why don't I see some of their money going back into these outreach programs? Well, I'm glad that you asked that, Stephen, because I think that's exactly where part of the responsibility has to come from and, to a large extent, is starting to come from. But he raised uh, two issues, that, um, the perception that Aboriginal people have a hatred against non-Aboriginal people, uh, blaming everybody for actions of the government. And the second thing, to what extent are the bans now taking on social issues? Do you want to talk about those? Um, actually, I'm not, I'm not really... Uh, um, I don't have authority or I'm, I don't have background in that area. Okay. What the bands are doing, all I know is that they're striving for self-government, but yeah. um, um, I, I don't, I, I can't form okay. an opinion. We can, we well, can Margaret, maybe I can jump sure. in a bit. Sure. Having worked with the New Chalmers Tribal Council sure. Health Board and worked in the Arctic too, many, many uh, bands, many Tribal Council Health Boards are taking initiatives and in looking at FAS. But it is not something that can be, um, I hope Stephen isn't suggesting that it be relegated only to um, the Aboriginal bands. It's a mutual responsibility. When we look at the downtown east side, we have 7,000 liquor seats in that 10 square blocks. As a voter... Those are all provincially licensed. That's right. Yeah. As a voter, aren't you interested to know about those things? Aren't you involved in... Yeah and how uh, decisions are made about how substance use is affected, what kind right. of programming. It is, it's our problem. It is not theirs. Okay. It is mutually a shared okay. problem. And uh, let's take a call now from Kathy in Mission. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Candace first. I've met her before, and she's a wonderful lady. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I have adopted in 1981 twins that are FAS and FAE. Okay. They also follow their tradition and they've built their self-esteem greatly because of that. That's great. Where their self-esteem falls, though, is within the community um, because people don't support them. They don't recognize that they have neurological disorder. Right. They're good-looking children, so they fall between these cracks. Oh, I see. The schools do not help. Right. And the programs around the districts do not help because their IQs do not fall into the right areas for help. Right. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, actually, Candace, you, uh, you address that to some extent in your book when you talk about a story about a calculator and a, and a, mm -hmm. a substitute teacher. Yeah. Do you want to tell that story to people? Well, um, in school, it's really hard for me to uh, do math and certain things. And if I don't have the calculator, I don't figure anything out. I'll have to, like, ask for help or figure out somehow. But it is very difficult for math. I don't hardly know any money or anything. So if the teachers don't know about that... Yeah, they then they get all frustrated and mad with me, and they think I know, I'm just lazy. Oh, I not. see. What okay. did the teacher say to you about your calculator? They said I couldn't use my calculator. So they said, yeah, they took it away, and they just said I couldn't use it. And they said, you could do it on your own. You have right. a smart brain, so... Right. I and that's tough. Can Candace brings up an excellent point, and one of the callers did too. She, I think she said something about her child being born with some antisocial behaviors. Mm -hmm. The behaviors are not antisocial. The behaviors are impulsive or, or or might be different than other children's, but the system is what makes them antisocial behaviors. Or, or system, you know, well, Candace's you see, we our response to that? Is, or? Yes, it's oh. our response to that that needs to be adjusted. Okay. Candace's point is an excellent point, where schools and systems need to look at supporting children with FAS to succeed yeah. by adapting the resources that we have and okay. adapting the philosophy. Okay, we're going to take some more calls on this, and uh, just before we do, if you would like to to contact Shiway, the program, this is how you can do that. Annette Garm is the coordinator. The Shiway program is in Vancouver and the phone number is 604-254-9951. And just before we go to the break, I think you should know uh, for the, the caller from Pender Harbor who raised some excellent points, that actually, occur according to the current laws, Aboriginal people cannot take responsibility for social programs yet. 
that as part of the treaty negotiation, the federal government has a constitutional obligation to take on those programs. The provincial government has been negotiating to try to take on some of it and get funding for it. And the bans are at the bottom of the list, and they would like to take that over. So it is important to know. And hopefully, that process will be shorter rather than longer. And the Seashells are very active in those negotiations as well. We'll be right back. I hated the gym. But now, thanks to the new Ego Booster... Here's a cheesy moment you might want to miss. And here's one you don't. Take a tomato, basil, and feta cheese. Slice the tomato and add a little feta. Top off with the basil. See, you can't get any cheesier. Oh, or, oh, maybe you can. Or even talk on the phone. I'm so happy. This cheesy moment is just a reminder. When you've got cheese, you've got choice. I used to have fruit stand, but now I grow tag. <laughs> Red tags are in season at Toyota BC dealers. Lease a 98 Sienna for only $3.53 a month. This is red tag country. Beautiful air, beautiful soil, beautiful tag. This is the RAV4, $288 a month, plus 4.8% financing OAC on all makes and models. You know car, I know tag. Tag juice? Hurry, the red tag sale is on now at your Toyota BC dealer. Is quality defined by surroundings, or service, or craftsmanship? At Cobble Hill Country Furnishings, quality is defined by all of these. Away from expensive city overhead, Cobble Hill Country Furnishings offers a comfortable shopping experience of carefully selected brand name furniture items. Unique, affordable. You might say quality and price do count in the end. Cobble Hill Country Furnishings, tomorrow's news today. This station believes in being accountable to you, the viewer, in our drama, information, and entertainment programming. We are a member of the Canadian Broadcast Standards Council, and as such, are committed to the highest standards of broadcasting. If you have a comment to make about our programming, write to us. We'll respond to your letter and send you information on the Council and our codes. And we're talking about fetal alcohol syndrome and specifically the Aboriginal community and some uh, very interesting points being raised. Um, we'll try to get as many calls in as we can. Uh, starting with Stacy on Bowen Island. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a foster parent and I've fostered a few children that have come from FAS families. Right. And where the women have continued to have, in one case it was seven children, in another case it was 11 children wow. who were in different group homes or foster homes. and both times when they'd lost their two kids and they had two more. Right. And I, I would like to see as a foster parent, I think people, I think their kids need to be left with them. I think someone needs to come into their home and help them. That's interesting. I realize there's times when children are at risk and they need to come out for a bit. Right. But I think, I think more has to be done with the family as a whole instead of just taking these kids away. Right. The parents don't bond properly with their children. Right. Their substance issues usually get worse. It just doesn't seem to help. And then the kids go back and the family has no more support. It right. seems to be over. Right. Well, okay, you've got your kids back, here you go. Well, thank you, Stacey. Uh, that's a, an excellent perspective as someone who's a foster parent. I guess that must be something that you've talked about, too. Yes, I'm a foster parent, and um, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly in what you said. We do need more services for families um, um, that our children are in care. We need services for the, the mothers and the fathers in the home rather than take the services out into the community right. we need to bring them into the, bring the services actually in, into the homes and i think more dollars they're talking about an additional 18 million to hire more social workers well they should add another additional 18 to bring to bring uh, workers like, like support staff workers. support, support yeah. workers like Shayway and traditional mothers right into the right. the homes of the, where these children their their traditional homes okay Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, Myrna in Victoria, go ahead, please. Hi, Hi. I'm a mother of two, and I'm involved with my um, daughter. She's in school. Mm -hmm. I live on the reserve, and we have a, a school on the reserve here. My, 
my concern is the kids who are in the school system, they need the teaching support program. Right. Otherwise, it's just going to perpetuate the pr uh, problem that we have right now. Mm -hmm. There's a high dropout rate of our Aboriginal children, um, right. and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better unless they have that help starting in kindergarten all the way through. Now, the funding from the federal government for the reserves, I'm not sure what the percentage actually reach, reaches the child. I think probably... 13%. 13. The rest 13 is taken up in administration. Yes. So we have a school and we don't have the, the backup. Yeah. And our children are having to leave the reserve to go off reserve to right. get the special needs um, help that they need, which right. is really unfair. Okay, well, thank you very okay. much for that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to take one more call before the break, but she's right. Of the $9 billion or so that the federal government spends, only 13% gets to the Aboriginal communities. Uh, let's talk to Herb now in Coquitlam. Hi, Herb. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, uh, well, so far from what you've been saying, I understand that fetal alcohol syndrome is, the, is caused by poverty and pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so far all you've talked about is women in poverty and in pain and what we must do to help them, right. which is okay, right? Right. But it occurs to me that men are poor too, yeah. and men are in pain too, and I would like to know what is being done to help men. Okay, well that's a, a very interesting question. In the downtown east side there are a lot of men yeah. in a lot of pain. Uh, that's true, and it's, uh, it's true that um, uh, men also need pain, and but usually it is not w need pain. Yeah, I mean, sorry, need help to come to terms with. <laughs> We're rushing <the> you. <laughs> sorry, but um, uh, you know what we need to look at in uh, specifically FAS. It is the mother who is carrying the child and um, has the baby in utero. And so we're trying to address that issue specifically. In the short term. In the short term and trying to rush. You only have it about nine months to intervene to try to create a b healthy baby. baby. Right. In places like Shiwe, we also see fathers. We're not specifically a woman-only kind of service. And so we do. We do a address lot of times the, the fathers families. disappear in the short term. That's often quite so that the fathers may not be involved with the children. But yeah. those who choose to be, we also support them too. Okay. And traditional mothers, are, our center is open for, for you, Herb. Uh, we'd very much like to see you there. Um, for all fathers. Oh yes, for all fathers too. You're very. I don't think Herb was welcome. Aboriginal, but uh, anyway, I'm whether sure he's, he's a father. Whether he's Aboriginal or not, well, he's very great. welcome. Thank good. you. Good. Okay. Good. That's great to know. And we'll take a break. We'll be back. And in the next segment, I'll share with you a couple of letters that came in after yesterday's show. One with an idea for a bridge between the two communities. <laughs> The bee mop is an essential because it never lets you wet your hands. The unique twist mop is also an essential because it rings out in a snap. And the Oscar angle broom is an essential too because it'll never cut corners. For your cleaner living, the first three Atlantic essentials, the bee mop, twist mop, and Oscar broom are now just one happy family. McCain brings you the freshest tasting frozen pizza ever made. McCain Pizza Premier in the unique vacuum packed flavor lock package that seals air out so it stays fresher tasting longer. It cooks in just half the time and has a tender no mess rim. So whenever you're ready for pizza, McCain Pizza Premier is ready for you in fresh tasting deli lovers pepperoni and deluxe. McCain Pizza Premier, we've got a lock on fresh taste. Janice Carlson was hurt in a car accident that wasn't her fault. I was uh, physically, emotionally, and financially traumatized by this accident. She found it difficult to talk to ICBC, so she called the law firm of Stevens and Holman. I don't believe I would have received a fair settlement if I had dealt with ICBC on my own. Make sure your ICBC settlement is everything it should be. Call us for a free consultation. I was very satisfied with the outcome of my case. Stevens and Holman. This is Glen Oak Ford on the Old Island Highway, Remy. How do you like it? Look, it's got this everything that downtown has. New Ford cars and trucks, used cars and trucks. The same parts and service specials as downtown, and a great sales staff. Glen Oak Ford in the Western Communities and downtown on Douglas. Two full-service dealerships, 
with the same great prices and the same great service. Right, Remy? Right. And we're talking about uh, fetal alcohol syndrome and uh, specifically our Aboriginal communities. But, I mean, we're all in the same community, ultimately, wherever we draw the circle. Just more issues there. And we'll uh, go back to the phone lines. Oh, letters. Letters in a minute. <laughs> uh, Rob in Nanaimo, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I'm an ex-policeman yes. way back. And uh, I can remember when the, uh, the native population were not allowed, allowed to drink, eh? Right. And uh, <clears throat> I, I believe uh, and uh, think that maybe something like this would be a good idea to uh, stop these people from having liquor mm -hmm. or booze, whatever, and uh, give them some kind of a card that they can get. Extra. I don't want to cut them off completely, but give them some kind of a card that they can only get so much a month or so much a day. Because okay. I can remember when they used to get a chit for groceries, okay. and uh, white people would stand on the, on, the, on the corner with their grocery list, and they'd go and pick up the groceries they needed, and uh, then turn around and use them cash for it, with, which mm -hmm. in turn, they, the native people went and got their booze from the bootlegger and what have you. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not all the uh, native people's fault. The white people got a hell of a lot to do with this, yeah. or had. Right. So I think that... Uh, Okay. You know, if they take a look, a long, hard look, listen to some of their elders, right. and see uh, see the problems they had way back when. Okay, well, we didn't have many people, many uh, native people in jail at that time. Like now we have now. lots. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Rob. I'm going to ask them um, what what they think about that. I know that one thing I've heard from a lot of Aboriginal leaders is they want the solutions to be ones that the Aboriginal community at least helps to design. But do you think it would would it would it work to say okay, there's no restriction, I mean, you're, you're, there's a restriction to alcohol? On a personal note for myself, um, I believe that alcohol is very harmful to our bodies, mm -hmm. our minds, and our spirits. Now, that's my personal, that's our spiritual belief in our family, and I can't speak for anyone else. Okay. I, I can't agree with the caller, because I think that what... I mean, as he's saying, this is an intervention that's in the past, and we know what the, our past has done to Aboriginal people. We are moving to try to establish equ equality and respect, and so those are choices Aboriginal people have to make for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's, it'll and, be interesting. And away from the, pa you know, the, the yeah. patrimony that we have historically I'll, had I'll an oppression and oppression. I can understand where he'd say that anybody who's had to deal with someone who has an alcohol addiction the first thing you want to do is be able to just not let them have it, but usually people who have an addiction find a way to get it, and you actually have to sort of hold their hand and get them out of the addiction. But coupled with that was a whole um, culture of oppression that was happening there right. too, right. and uh, racism too. As, as people become more empowered and respected and uh, have the autonomy to look over their own programs, then I think... You, you they mean, start that, that journey. Yes, I think yeah. they will start a journey okay. to help. Maybe you can I'm ask Candace about her views on alcohol. Okay. Go ahead, Candice. Well, I think it's bad for your body, and it's not healthy, and you could probably die from it if you drink too much, like Sandra did. And um, that's what I think of alcohol. It's I really think bad. a lot of people would agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have two letters we received after yesterday that I would like to share with you. One is from Tom Happy Nook. Now, some of you will remember Tom Happy Nook. He's with the Hawaiat First Nation and they won an award for a documentary that they'd done on a river. Uh, but actually, the reason he was writing was with respect to the Native Youth Movement. And as some of you know who watched yesterday, Dave Dennis, who is the leader of the Native Youth Movement, uh, we played a clip from him about why they occupied the BC Treaty Commission office. They are upset about the negotiations. Now, uh, Tom Happynook writes, it is important that people know that we have many avenues available to the Nuchalnuth people to keep informed provide input or express their concerns about the treaty process. For example, the Hawaii Treaty Committee, of which I'm a member, sends out treaty newsletters to all our members regularly, provides updates during tribal meetings, and is available to the membership to answer any questions at any time. The Hyatt First Nation, and David's family in particular, has repeatedly invited David to join us in our update sessions, but he has not found the time to do so to date. 
We have repeatedly invited David because we are very interested in his concerns and views on how we should approach, approach the future of the Native youth. And he concludes with saying, if the Native youth movement does not agree with negotiating and has come up with a better way to create security for Native youth and future generations, we'd be pleased to hear about it. It's important to read that out because Dave Dennis is one of the main leaders and we did invite the Native youth movement to join us today. They haven't yet responded. I anticipate that they will and perhaps at that time we can find out why so many of them are protesting the current negotiations. Now in addition, we received a very interesting letter from a, read, uh, a viewer, Marlene, who talked about yesterday's show, and I can't read you all of it, but she says in her letter, last year I attended a native Aboriginal powwow which took place in the PNE buildings. I enjoyed watching the native dancers perform beautiful and colorful dances. The event was open to the public, but I was surprised to see that only a few non-natives attended this colorful and vibrant event. I concluded that non-native people still feel estranged from the Aboriginal culture. And she notes that uh, callers to the show yesterday were primarily Aboriginal people. So she talks about what we should do in Vancouver is have the very first Aboriginal Mardi Gras if the Aboriginal community would put that on and have one that would then be inclusive of everyone who wants to participate and attend and so that we can learn about the food and the culture and the dancing. What do you think, Margaret? Well, I, I, I think it's a great idea and there's powwows throughout the Lower Mainland all the time. I don't like the... Um, the, the, the term Mardi Gras it sort of depicts a big party and I right. you know but um, traditional dancing it's, it's great it's um, it would be nice it's great for the soul it's great yeah. for the spirit and it brings families together and brings um, um, teens together like Candace and right. um, we it really helps enjoy understanding it. oh definitely yeah. bridges the gap and that's what she was talking about which is great uh, let's talk to Christopher now in Victoria hi Christopher yeah, getting back on topic, the uh, it's taxpayers that pay for hospitals and emergency rooms yes. and the uh, long-term health costs of alcohol and tobacco abuse. Yes. But these are legal drugs, and the profits go to huge corporations. Yeah. You know, this doesn't seem fair. If I was some funky lawyer out there, I'd be trying to sue Seagram's. Right. I think that would be the first step in solving the financing problem for fetal alcohol syndrome. Well, th thank you for that suggestion. It's interesting that comes at the same time that the government is looking at suing tobacco companies. T to what extent does the private sector pick up some of the costs? I mean, are there any corporations saying, okay, well, uh, we don't like this addiction. We'll help fund the cost of uh, rehabilitation. There are. There are some private organizations and uh, and there have been various initiatives from some liquor companies towards the programs. Right. Our program is completely funded by public money. Right. There isn't enough of it. There needs to be more partnership for sure, and hopefully that's what something we can look forward to in the future. Yeah, I think that's an excellent suggestion, though, for to get the private sector to help fund mm -hmm. these programs. Because also surplus from um, um, gov government taxes on liquor. I think the tax, the surplus on tax, should go to children like Candace for their education in the future because right. these children are going to need, like you said, what was it, a half and a half, one, one and a half, half million? Mil? Yeah. Okay, well, my question to you, politicians or government people is where are you going to get that 1.5 million? Right, per okay, child. Per child, so suggest, well, some of it come from your liquor sales. That's a good idea. I think that's an excellent idea. And uh, we'll be back after the break with more of your comments and calls on fetal alcohol syndrome and our communities. For the first time ever, the Air Miles Reward Program has arrived at the Brick. Now you can buy the best brand name furniture, mattresses, appliances, electronics, and home computers for less, and earn Air Miles Travel Miles. Nobody beats the Brick. Mina Darling. This cheese casserole looks delicious. Mmm, exquisite. And your recipe? Well, I changed the mozzarella with Emmental, the gear with Swiss, the Colby with Gouda. When you change the cheese, you change the taste, giving your meals a whole new bite. And then I added salt and pepper. Oh, and a clove of garlic. When you've got cheese, you've got choice. Tuesday on Czech TV. He's the Navy's best courtroom lawyer. But it's not just a job, it's one incredible adventure. What the hell was that? Canadian actor David James Elliott stars in the exciting drama, Jag. It's here, Tuesday at 8, Check TV. The Earth 
is in a race with global warming, and the Earth is losing. the power to fight global warming by demanding more fuel efficient cars. Contact the Sierra Club. And we're talking about fetal alcohol syndrome and uh, we'll go straight back to the phones and start with a, a place, I think this is our first call from Ruskin, Diane from Ruskin. Hi. Hi. Um, there are two comments that I would like to make. One is that there's a lot of focus here on prevention, yes. but there is none on recognition. Recognition of fetal alcohol as a medical condition as okay. opposed to a syndrome. Okay. So that the government has to take some responsibility. They hold the liquor licenses. Right. Um, and they let people reproduce time after time after time who are fetal alcohol, who produce fetal alcohol children. Well, I don't think you can stop somebody from reproducing. I mean, you can suggest it, but uh, look at Alberta when they tried to, uh, to legislate against... Anyway, go ahead. Uh, well, I understand that, but I, think, but I think that there are first steps, and perhaps Alberta was a first step. The other thing that concerns me is that there has been no talk uh, at all either about consequences for fetal alcohol children and adults that are understandable that they can learn from. Um, I don't know the statistics. I don't know how many children grow up to become troubled adults who eventually end up in our prisons. Right. And they don't understand the punishment because they don't even understand the crime. Yes, and that's uh, actually the prisons are full of, of people who have fetal alcohol syndrome and fetal alcohol effect. That's right. Yeah. I, I do believe that it is everybody's problem. Um, I know Kathy, by the way, the caller from Mission. I know her children. Okay. Um, we are involved in a dance group together, and I am not Aboriginal. Right. Uh, have been involved for a long time. Okay. So I see a lot of the signs of the issues. I've also been a foster parent, right. and both my children were fetal alcohol. Okay. And there has to be help out there, but there has to be recognition. Okay. Through the government, through the school systems, through the penal system. Right. Okay, well, thank you for that, Diane. I'm going to try to get another call. That one stands on its own about recognition. Uh, Nancy in Langley, go ahead, please. Yes, Judy. Um, as you know who I am, Nancy Woldridge, the oh, okay. Grandparents Rights yeah, Association. Yeah. Judy, we often help the Aboriginal people and also the Métis. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year I was able to do a forum with a solo nation out in Chilliwack, which right. I found very enlightening, enlightening and I'm very much... Um, appreciated about these people. They pull themselves up a long way and they're right. doing w wonderfully well. Okay. I would like the panel to know and yourself and our viewers that FAS is also in our system or in our um, sure. um, culture. Right. And I think it should be um, building the bridges for everybody to work together with this okay. problem. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. And of course, she's right. It's uh, Aboriginal, mm -hmm. non Aboriginal. Let me take one more and then I'll let you guys all talk about spirituality and, uh, and the community in uh, all over the place. Uh, Susan in Vancouver. Go ahead, Susan. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, that uh, it's very brave of Candace to um, be there today. Right. I think it's wonderful that she's there. Um, the other thing is that uh, uh, there's been a lot spoken about fetal alcohol syndrome and uh, the Native community, but it's in it, it's, it's, it's widespread. Everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've just been. And I, I was wondering what can I do? What what can a person like me do yeah. for for fetal alcohol syndrome babies? Okay, and that's a, a great question to now ask the panel to respond to. Uh, we'll start with Annette and then 
uh, go from there. Well, there's a variety of things you can do is educate, you know, it sounds like you're interested in the issue, educate yourself and others and, you know, address your MLAs, uh, get involved with hospital boards, organizations, local organizations. Um, right. There's a variety of them out there. So it's a matter of choosing. Um, you could contact even Sunny Hill Health Centre, um, whether it be from a volunteer or getting involved with some sure. of the FAS support groups. There's an FAS education program in the downtown east side of Vancouver through right. Crabtree Corner. There's there's a myriad of things that especially and community need more based. people to help out. They certainly do. There yeah. there are starting small little fires starting mm -hmm. to address this issue of FAS throughout Canada, throughout all socioeconomic groups, through all all cultures, all, all cultures. Communities, yeah. And it's a matter of just finding which one interests you and to okay. stay with and it. Candice, if you could say something to the viewers about how they should respond to people with FAS, what would you say? Uh, how they should be treated for FAS, like yeah. kids? Anyone. Anyone? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> How about remember ahead, you have to be patients? Yeah. Oh, patients. you got to have lots of patience with kids like me. Yes. And you must have lots and lots of love. Lots of love. Yes. Okay. And what did you tell us about the spirituality and, and the feathers that you're holding? Yes. And as, as you can tell on TV, we're First Nations. Yep. And um, we're the, from the House of Delganutis. Judy so graciously uh, introduced us. Thank you, Judy. Um, Candace has her regalia on, and she's made this herself under the teachings of our, our elder, um, Mrs. Margaret Harris, better known as Grandma Harris or Grandma Margaret. And if you're watching, hello, darling. <laughs> we love you. And hello, Gary. We, I love you, too. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> but go. she spent... Um, Quite some time. She's, a week. She's made, took a week to make this. Right. And also the hat. And, and that's part um, of t a touching base with your culture. And our sacred feathers that we hold when we speak. So we speak from the heart. Okay. Now, Candace, I'd like to sh her to show the, the frog on the back of her regalia. Oh, can Is we do that, time? Kevin? Okay, yes, if you stand up carefully. Okay. Watch out for the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Here, let me just take that off. Okay, we're way over time for a break, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you turn around a bit you more? Grab the other yeah, side. I can. I don't think we can. Oh, you there we go. Oh, my goodness, that's beautiful. And now... Uh, that's a frog and the feathers up here. And this is for oh, her Cree nation. Fabulous. She's uh, also Cree from her... Okay, and we really have to take a break, and we'll be back with closing comments. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> How was it today? Good. What did he say? Pen? What did he say? We're gonna have a baby. representative about the freedom to choose and the power to get there rainy day blues got you down don't frown girl just smile at the sun and cover girl seashells she says seashells new shades back cover girl pink shells sand castles silver plums and everything is sun kissed so get what she says cover girl seashells a fresh idea a fresh face to the world Easy breezy beautiful cover girl Hi, can I take your order? Can I get a hamburger? Will that be all? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, come again. Can I take your order? Fish. Fish. All right. For healthy looking skin, wash with Noxzema. It helps scrub out oil and dirt, won't overstrip skin if it's natural moisture like some soap can. Look, if you're free tonight, Maybe we can go to a movie. I'm afraid I don't get off until 10. Maxima girls get noticed. 
And coming up, we're going to talk about child custody issues in the wake of the new federal laws. And then we're going to talk about guns and the auxiliary police. And an end run around the education bargaining system is coming up next week. If you would like to participate in the custody show tomorrow, fax number 250-389-1226. Today and yesterday, we just scratched the surface on an issue that affects all of us. Whether we created it or not, we don't have to feel guilt, but we should feel responsibility for the future because if we all work together, it'll be much better. I'm Judy Tayabji, and we'll see you tomorrow. It's here, where you can still play make-believe. And Twinkies are considered soul food. Check TV.